realize one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Elations Magazine, along with Elations Radio, presents Elation Honors Gala Weekend. Friday, November 16th, Saturday, November 17th, at the Drury Inn, 8700 Eagle Road in Brentwood, Missouri. Being featured on Friday is a meet and greet that begins at 6 p.m., followed by the Pastor's Corner, hosted by Elder Ernest E. Richard, Jr., On Saturday morning at 10 a.m., Charles McCutcheon will come in and teach a financial seminar teaching your business how to grow, receiving business loans and getting lines of credit that will help to induce and produce a better business for you. On Saturday at 1 p.m., Elations Magazine presents From Pain to Purpose with keynote speaker Apostle Angela Walker. The 2018 Deliverance Seminar also features Apostle Beauty Cooper. Dr. Loretta Pettit and Minister Michelle Wright. For more information, you can call Kimmy Kim Robinson at 314-546-8567. That number again, 314-546-8568. To RSVP, you can go to elationshonors at gmail.com. And for more information for the overall weekend, you can contact Sister Michelle Wright at 314-405-1711. That number again, 314-405-1711. It's the 2018 Elation Honors Gala Weekend taking place at the Drury Inn, 8700 Eagle Road in Brentwood, Missouri. Reserve your space now. Tickets are going fast.
Hi, I'm Nina Taylor, and here is your Gospel News. Gospel singer, songwriter, Damon Little. He began his singing ministry at the age of five, when he and his brothers and cousins formed a family group. His first studio recording was with his uncle, who just happened to be the great Clarence Fountain of the Five Blind Boys of Alabama. Born in Baltimore, Maryland, Little spent a portion of his childhood in Pensacola, Florida. Little's musical ministry has taken him to countries like Mexico, Jamaica, the Dominican Republic, the Bahamas, the Cayman Islands, and many, many other places. Places. He's featured on TV One, BET, TVN, and The Word Network. He began producing a string of gospel hits with a strong urban R&B feel, including the track of his debut album, You Can't Straddle the Fence, and Long As I Got Shoes, and Do Right, How You Gonna Do Right with a Do Wrong Mind, the title of his second album, Do Right. To Maya J, it all began for her as a child in her hometown of Willingboro, New Jersey. Singing in church became a regular part of her life at an early age. It wasn't until 1998, at the age of 14, when Tamaya's introduction to the professional music industry would solidify her career choice and inspire a dream. She, along with four other girls collectively known as the group Praise, won first place at the youth division of McDonald's Gospel Fest at Madison Square Garden in New York City. Her independent album in 2005 entitled Suddenly even earned her a nomination for the Gospel Music Channel's Pop Video of the Year. Her first release, More Than You'll Ever Know, reached number one. The fifth song from her album entitled The Reason was selected for inclusion on the compilation CD Gospel Skate Jams Volume 2, which was nominated for 2008 stellar award for best hip-hop CD of the year. In 2005, 2006, and 2007, Tamaya was selected by Fashion Fair Cosmetics campaign by offering three songs for her album as a gift to their customers. In 2007, she performed on the hit stage play, Why Do You Love? Tamaya spent the last six years traveling as the soprano background vocalist for mega gospel duo Mary Mary. In September 2016, Tamaya J released the single, God Got My Back, from her album, Love For Your Name. The song, God Got My Back, was birthed from a telephone conversation where Tamaya was made to feel less than what God created her to be. Tamaya has teamed up with the Don't Be a Bully Foundation, which encourages youth to speak out against bullying or anyone who tries to put them down and make them feel less than what God created them to be. As Tamaya says it, keep your focus on God and know that God's got your back. For more information on the Don't Be a Bully Foundation, log on to Tamaya J's website at tamayaj.com. Combining his full-bodied voice and 80s throwback attitude, gospel singer Zagardi Cortez was a member of James Fortune's FIA before launching his solo career. Having grown up touring the gospel circuit with his family, the Cortez family, Zagardi was mentored on the road by John P. Key after an appearance on Key's 2005 release, Live at the Fellowship, Cortez joined Fortune's Fire, singing lead on the 2007 album, The Transformation, and its top 20 single, The Blood. With Cortez up front, Fire would top the gospel charts in 2010 with the single, I Believe. And suddenly, the singer was being talked about by names as diverse as John Legend and Ricky Smiley. The stage was set for his solo career, which began officially in 2012 with the album, The Introduction, his debut album released by Black Smoke Music Label. Here's your Billboard Top 10 Gospel Songs in the Country. Number 10, Todd Delaney, Your Great Name. Number 9, James Fortune featuring Zacardi Cortez, Favor of God. Number 8, Anthony Brown with I Got That. Number 7, Kalante Gavin, No Ordinary Worship. Number 6, Miranda Curtis, Nobody Like You, Lord. Number 5, Tasha Cobb Leonard, I'm Getting Ready. Number 4, Marvin Sapp, Listen. Number three, Jason Nelson, Forever. Number two, Brian Courtney Wilson, A Great Work. And our new number one song comes from Zacardi Cortez, Oh, How I Love You. Well, that's your Billboard Top Ten Songs and your Gospel News. I'm Nina Taylor. Let's get back to more great gospel music on this great station. 
Hello, I'm Nina Taylor, your Gospel News Reporter, and you're listening to The Pastor's Corner with my friend, Elder Ernest Richard, on Elation Radio. You can hear Nina Taylor, along with my wonderful wife, every Friday, Thursday evening at 10 p.m. Well, this is The Pastor's Corner. I'm Elder Ernest E. Richard, Jr., along with uh, my posse. I pray that they're there with me. I'm going to call them out, Pastor Dawn Westbrook and Pastors Daryl and Donald Pointer. How's everybody? Bless. Amen. All Bless. All right. Amen. So how good to have you guys on tonight. I'm doing excellent. I'm asking, how are you? Amen. Well, I'm you know, here. we have... We've been excited about this, this evening, amen. There is a word from God, amen. And we welcome the iRadio family and the Periscope family and Facebook Live. God bless you all. All right. Well, believe it or not, I am in the studio of one Miss Kimmy Kim right now in St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, we are trying to get set up for this great weekend that's about to take place. And I would just assume I'm going to try to get Facebook Live set up and Periscope set up as you begin to teach and to share the Word of God. And then we'll get it out there where the rest of the general public can hear what's going on. Anyway, I'm going to turn this into your hand. Give me a minute to give a proper introduction. And then we're going to release you to do what thus saith the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen. Our third, fourth, and fifth wheels in the cog called the Pastor's Corner. I want to introduce to some and present to others Pastor Dawn Westbrook, Pastor Daryl, and Donna Pointer. Without further ado, bring them on, Sister Kimmy Kim. Amen. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, First of all, we represent Healing Mountains Ministries International. Amen. Thank you so much. We're an organization, and our, um, our mission is to provide ministry to those in need of spiritual, physical, emotional, and psychological healing. Amen. And that is based on the ministry to the whole person out of John 5, 4, and 6. Amen where the Lord Jesus Christ himself asked the man, would thou be made whole? Amen. So thank you so much for this opportunity, this platform. We do have a word. We were talking about the character and, amen, the made-up mind of Abraham. We came from Genesis. I believe it was chapter 17, 18, and also 20 through 23. But specifically, Last night in our teleconference, I believe we were dealing with chapter 18 of Genesis. Our, my co-speaker for this evening, Pastor Donna, amen, gave a very beautiful um, word regarding obedience and Abraham's heart towards God, but also, most importantly, how the father was already intimately acquainted with Abraham and Sarah and knew intentionally what he had planned for their life, amen, and the life of their seed. Pastor Donna, you now have the floor. Amen. <laughs> amen. Well, further, first, first of all, I would like to know if you were praying, please. Praise the Lord. I love to pray. Amen. And yes, I will. Uh, be, believe it or not, um, men and women of God, we are a ministry that focuses specifically on the power of prayer, its ability to change and shift, amen, a situation, a circumstance, a person. And so with that, we believe that the word itself by itself is enough because the Father God says that he hearkens unto every word that proceeded out of his mouth, being his word. Amen. Scripture correctly says that hearken unto every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. But nonetheless, he also said that his word, his word would not return to him void. Amen. So we at Healing Mountains Ministries believe in the power of prayer, particularly 
the power of prayer as it pertains to making us whole. For the Father created us, and he said that everything that he did not plant in us, that he would root it out or pluck it up. Amen. And sickness and disease and infirmity is not of God. Amen. It is not his will or his desire for you to be ill, dis-ease, distress, amen, or stress in the name of Jesus. So now we will pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this evening. I thank you for this assembly, Father God. In your matchless name, we come before you now recognizing that there is great power, hallelujah, in your name, the name that is above every name. So we come in the name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, the name that saves heals, delivers, sets free, and restores in Jesus' name. Father God, I thank you for the manifestation, amen, and the power of the Holy Spirit that is present, the anointing that destroys the yoke and removes every burden, the word that will be spoken with grace, amen, to the hearers. I thank you, Lord God, that the word that will be released tonight will be a word in season in the name of Jesus. Father God, I truly thank you for this opportunity, for this forum, for this platform. Father God, let your people receive revelation and wisdom. Let them receive an impartation in the name of Jesus and a very specific strategic strategy for their life tonight in Jesus name. Father God, we crown you king and we humbly come before you now recognizing your majesty and your sovereignty. Hallelujah. Again, Father God, I pray that you will speak to us out of your holy temple. Set a holy fire in the mouth of your speakers and give them this hour the tongue of the learned that we the listeners may receive a a rhema word, and that word which is needed for this very hour. Father God, let them speak with grace in the name of Jesus and release a word in season. Again, I say release a word in season in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you. I bless you. I exalt your name. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you because tonight will be like none other. I believe that you will do something exceptional and extraordinary in the lives of the listeners. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Um, for, for, for one thing, we were talking up on last night about um, how to approach God. How, how do we as saints, approach God and God and we were coming from Genesis chapter 18 I'll start in verse 2 it says Abraham looked up and saw three men standing across from him when he saw them he ran from the entrance of his tent of the tent to meet them and bow low to the ground he said my lord if i find if i have found favor in your sight do not pass by and leave your servant let a little water be brought so that you may wash your feet and rest under the tree. Now, the question was, how do we approach God? That is the question. And and I'm asking um all all the pastors that's um on the station tonight to just answer that. How would you how do you think we're supposed to approach God? Amen. Amen. Or is that a question to us? Amen directly or is it a question? I'm us. sorry. Sorry. Praise the Lord. Amen. Go ahead. Okay. Praise the Lord. Um well, I do believe it's important to approach him first of all recognizing his sovereignty and who he is. Amen. His majesty. Amen. Uh, just reverence him is the first thing that I do, even when I pray. Amen. I approach him first and foremost by acknowledging who he is. Amen. Amen. Yes. We don't approach God as if we know that we're naked. <clears throat> 
that was the sin of Adam and Eve. They approach God as if they know they were naked. We don't approach him as we know we are naked. We approach him as we know that we are. And we just don't approach him of last night of uh, sleeping with somebody, then all of a sudden want God to go ahead and, and hear our prayer the next day. We just won't approach God that way. You know, as if we don't have no shamefulness in what we do. Praise Amen. God. Okay, go on, Pastor Donna. Amen. I'm not not t- intending to read the whole entire scripture, but I just there was a, it was a question, and this is a different platform than what we would do in Bible study. Um, it was the question is how do we as saints approach God? I believe approaching God is in humility and humbleness. And another way of approaching God is through um, love and and also humbling ourselves before getting on our knees, really, really reverencing God in a, a, a way that, you know, we wouldn't do anyone else. Just as we honor our parents, we're supposed to honor God. And a lot of people think that it's okay to go aggressively, um, to God and then expect an answer. So that was my thing of how do we approach God? Well, this is, this is Pastor Pointer, Daryl Pointer. First, we we approach God at His feet. We don't approach Him eye to eye, as if we deserve to. Pro- you know, as we deserve it. We approach Him at His feet, bow down to His feet. And let him know, Lord, if it be thy will for you to go ahead and answer my prayer, let thy will be done. We don't just approach God as if we just demanding. You know, yes, we're supposed to have an expectation of him answering our prayer, but we're not supposed to be have our chest all poked out as if he going to do it because our chest is all out. But we got to come to him as a humble st- a humbleness. Amen. I'll start in verse twenty and verse five of chapter eighteen. It says, And let me get a bit of food so that you may refresh yourself. This is Abraham saying this to God. Since you have passed by your servant's home, ask I mean after that you may be on your way. All right, they replied. This is the the father and the two angels, you may do as you say. So in verse 6, it says, So Abraham hurried into the tent and said to Sarah, Quick, take three measures of fine flour, knead it to, I mean, knead it and make bread. Verse 7, Then Abraham ran to the herd and chose a fine tender calf and gave it to his servant who quickly prepared it. Abraham then took some curd and milk along with the calf and had been, I mean, that had been prepared and placed the food before them. They ate while he was standing near them. Now, my thing is, under the tree, now my thing is, is that how he approached them and then how he invited them into his home and how he treated them when they were there. And that's the same thing as we as people, as the people of God or the saints of God, um, are to treat a stranger who comes to our doorway. And instead of running them away and mistreating them, we ought to treat them with love and with honor. And then we we ought to allow them even to come into the home, um, even to, you know, serve them. But the thing was, this wasn't just any old stranger. And sometimes, like the Bible says, we never know when we entertain angels. Sometimes we'll push a homeless person away, and that can just be that angel. So my thing is, if we approach God with honor, we should treat others in that same manner. We should love one another in that same manner. How do we honor God? How do we approach God? How do we approach one another? And that is a question. 
And and um, I know that it's us on the line, and I just thank the Lord because this is a great platform because I believe that there's someone out there that want to know that same thing. How do you do it? And and how do you do it without being afraid because of the society we live in today is so um, full of so much dismay or dismise, you know, to where we don't know um, who to um, allow to come in. But the thing is, when you are filled with the Holy Ghost and he gives you a spirit of discernment, you know who to allow to come in and who who you're not supposed to. So it's how do we approach God? It, it runs over into how do we approach one another. Amen. Mr. Westbrook. Praise the Lord. I, this is a very unusual format, and I'm I, okay. I thought surely there was more to say, but praise the Lord. I wanted to go back to Genesis uh, chapter 18 because I found it very relevant and very. Oh, there was an awakening for me because two things I discovered that God visited Abraham, not alone, but with his two angels. They were men they were disguised as men but the lord himself visited abraham and disclosed to him his intentions in chapter 19 of destroying um sodom amen and so subsequently when he found out the intention or the mission as i would put it of what the Lord had intended to do and these two angels, he began to implore, amen, to intercede. I, I think it was intercession that he was making on behalf of those in Sodom, in particular Lot and his family. And remember, Lot did not go alone. He went with concubines and servants, amen. So when when Abraham began to say, if there be 50, glory to God, and if there be 40, and each and every time the Spirit of the Lord said that he would spare them, if he found 50, if he found 40, if he found 30, if he found 20, if he found 10. I believe that if Abraham said, if you found one, spare Sodom and Gomorrah, but he did not ask, amen. But nevertheless, because of Abraham's obedience, and because I believe he had a prayerful, prayer was like as if he breathed. Abraham believed in prayer. He believed in the intimacy of prayer. Amen. He believed in the connection that he had with the Father, the Spirit of God, through prayer. And the Father thought it enough to come and disclose to him the intentions of what he was going to do in chapter 19, and that was to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Another point, another matter, rather, that came um, to surface for me was God's purpose and love for Sarah. He knew, I believe, that even when Sarah, her original name, Sariah, was in the womb of her mother, amen, the very seed, amen, from the beginning of her existence. The father was acquainted with her. For, you know, the word says that our lives, our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And when we come to the end of ourselves and when we come before the great, amen, throne room and the seat of judgment, amen, where the father will will judge us for all that we've done. In that book is written everything that we, we've done from the beginning of time, from our inception, amen, through the course of our lives, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, why do I say that? Because when the father told Sarah that she was going to have a child, she laughed as in disbelief. This was the Lord himself. Abraham recognized that this was not just a mere stranger, amen, but someone, the Lord himself, I believe, Abraham recognized that, that this is the Lord, and he reverenced him. He paid obedience to him when he came and made his home open and welcomed 
well, not his home, but he gave him, um, hospi- he extended his hospitality, for lack of better words, to the Lord and the two gentlemen. But let me get back to Sarah. When Sarah laughed, and he, the Lord, asked her, Sarah, why did you laugh? Amen. Now, prior to him saying that she was going to have a child, the Lord had already asked, where is Sarah, your wife, in the, I I think it was verse 9 of chapter 18. And the Lord was asking because he wanted her to listen to what he had to say. He wanted, it was more, more or less make a pronouncement. And I liken that to the pronouncements that the Spirit of God has already made over our lives from the beginning of time. When we were born, he said that the plans that he has for us are for good. God has plans for our lives. Amen. He says they are for good and not evil to bring us a good success. I'm paraphrasing. Amen. And the word also says that the plans, man makes plans, but it is the plans of the Lord that will be established. And so getting back to Sarah, the Lord had already intended and had plans for Sarah to bear a son. But yet she laughed within herself, within herself. And the spirit of the Lord discerned that she was laughing or laughing in doubt and distrust. Amen. Sarah was concerned that she was over the age of bearing any children, that she was barren, and that it would be very difficult or close to impossible for her to bear a child. But I'm saying this in conjunction to Abraham's obedience. You'll see how I tie this back. So when the Lord questioned her, amen, I believe that the Holy Spirit took notice of her, amen, right then and there. And the Father, out of his grace and out of her disbelief and distrust, blessed her in spite of her distrust. Hear what I'm saying. Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, in, in as a token of respect and submitting or subjection to Abraham. And because of Abraham's obedience, this is powerful. Because of Abraham's obedience, the word of God says that it was um, his faith, amen, was accounted to him as righteousness. Abraham knew and, and possibly was well acquainted that Sarah in herself doubted and had distrust and did not believe that the Lord himself said that she was going to bear a child. And and I'm sure she has some issues, like we all do, when the Lord gives us a word. Amen. And you receive it deep in your spirit, and you know it's a word from God, yet you doubt. Why is that? And then the Lord will have, what, two or three witnesses come and confirm the word that he has given to you. But let me get back to Abraham. So Abraham was well acquainted with his wife. Why would he not be? Why would he not know that Sarah doubted, that Sarah was walking in some distrust with what the word had, what the Lord had given them, the word that the Lord had given them? But yet Abraham pursued the promise. Amen. Abraham still believed God, and he did not doubt him. And even in his old age, this blows my mind, even in his old age, this man of God still had the nature within him, amen, to produce seed to bear a son. That's very powerful. Let that sit for like a Selah moment. I'm not... I just want you to just grasp that. 
This is the greatness of our God. And Abraham, early, even in the beginning, when the Lord told him to leave his father and all that he knew and was acquainted with and all that was familiar, yet Abraham trusts God and left. Sometimes the Lord will tell you to go and not look back. In chapter 19 of Genesis, unfortunately, Lot's wife looked back and to her demise. Amen. Disobedience. Because the angels had told her, don't look back. Go. But let me get back to Abraham. Abraham's obedience is so significant, I believe, to us as believers today. We need to recognize it's not in all of the, the grandiose things that we do, mm. but it's in the very simple heart of man that believes God and loves God with all that is within him. The Word of God says, love the Lord God with all of your mind, all of your heart, all of your soul. I'm paraphrasing. All of your might. And the Word of God also says, amen, that he loves us. But what's so interesting is that he loved you and I even before we had the capacity to understand the love that he has towards us. It far exceeds our human thinking. Amen. His love for us was so insurmountable that he gave the ultimate sacrifice, which was his son, Jesus. Jesus had an opportunity also in the Garden of Gethsemane. Amen. I like in that too, you know, sometimes we have those moments, those come to Jesus moments where you're between a rock and a hot and a hard place. And it's like, God, I really don't want to do this. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. The following day, he went through an excruciating torture. Amen. For you and I. Yet he did not, the word of God says, not a mumbling word. He did not say, stop. He did not call a legion of angels. Amen. He did not uh, just speak the word. I'm sure he could have brought down buildings and, and earthquakes and all kinds of catastrophes on these individuals. He did not say anything. Amen. To deny the journey that he knew that he accepted. He walked out his obedience to the Father God for the ultimate sacrifice for you and for I. I believe that Abraham had a very holy confidence in God. He had an assurance of faith in God. He knew without a shadow no wavering, amen, to the greatness of God, amen. And later in Genesis, he would have to pass another test, and the father would ultimately ask him to sacrifice his son, Isaac, his firstborn. Well, the firstborn that was promised because he had a prior son, amen with one of the concubines of Sarah. But nonetheless, Abraham shows to us an amazing ability to love God to the extent that it may not make sense to you, to obey him to the extent that you cannot begin to try to rationalize it. Amen but just to walk it out in holy confidence, amen, with full assurance, knowing that God honors his word and that he honors covenant, amen. Pastor Darrell and Donna, would you like to add comments? What I would like to say, yes, 
you know, when uh, when Abraham asked if it be 50, and he worked it all the way down to 10, well, it was already proven that it would have been, he would have worked it down to one, because we remember the great flood when he sat there and he was getting ready to destroy the world. And he seen one favor and one man, one grace in one man's eye, and that was Noah. So he would have worked it down to one. That's sure. And for our listeners, this is what I want you to understand. Our listeners, okay? When we sit there, we we talk. Give this Bible study is for those who are believers. Those are who are His children, and. Was what we talk is what we're talking about, and it's also talking about those who are not on milk anymore, but those who are on meat. You know, mature in your in your in your walk with God. You're on meat now, so you know better. Okay, so we're not. I don't want anybody to get confused to think that we're talking about. Oh, because you still do wrong. Don't go and come to church. Don't do that. Still come. If you are on milk, still come to church. So God work work that thing out in you. But those who are on meat, you know better. You know not to do, keep doing the same thing, the same sin. You know, when you repent, repent is turn it over. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Donna. Amen. I was just um, reading in um, verse 17 and verse 1, it says, When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the sovereign God. Walk before me and be blameless. Then I will confirm my covenant between me and you, and I will give you a multitude of descendants. And I just thank the Lord because we are a part of that descendant. We are a part of his descendants. We are um, to be blessed. Like God said, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. We are a blessed generation, and we are under the covenant of of the Lord, of, of Abraham. And as she was saying about um, Sarah and Abraham, how he was obedient, God is looking for us to be that same obedient people. We are to walk up right before God. We are to even come before him with praise and with thanksgiving. We are to speak with God in a loving manner and in a way that we should, if we would really want someone to speak to us. We ought to do all that we're to do to walk upright before God. Amen. Amen. And this is so perfect because I believe that, yes, I know Pastor Darrell said that, that you know, this Bible study is for those who are uh, mature Christians. But, no, this Bible study is for those who seek and desire, amen, to know God, amen, to know and to become acquainted with Jesus. Amen. And I would like to lead those who are interested in, amen, the prayer of salvation to repeat with me this prayer. It is called the sinner's prayer. And I believe that after you have said this, that there is salvation available to you by grace and through faith, just like Abraham had faith. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The word of God says that if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with the heart that you believe and are justified, just as Abraham was called justified, amen, and he was, it was accounted unto him as righteousness, his faith, glory to God and his obedience. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and you are saved. That is Romans 10 and 9 through 10. So if you'll just repeat with me, amen, this short prayer, praise the Lord. I believe that you yourself can be saved. I believe that you can be counted a part of that family. You can be part of that covenant, amen, Glory to God, and your life will be changed. 
Amen. Dear Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Dear Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Come into my life. Come into my life. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And now help me to live for you the rest of this life. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Now, if you have prayed that prayer, and now you're wondering, well, what do you do next as a new Christian? Amen. Well, I believe that you should go and tell somebody about your decision. Amen. You go and you tell someone. Amen. Because it's important to tell someone to make it public. Amen. To make it firm. Go and find a brother or sister in the Lord and tell him or her, amen, hey, I just made a decision to follow Jesus. Tell someone today if you can. It is a great way to seal the deal, as I call it, in Jesus' name. Now, you don't have to um, use a lot of fancy words to talk to God every day, but it's important that you begin to do that. Praise God. There are no right and wrong words. Just be yourself and thank the Lord daily for your salvation. And pray for others in need and and seek his direction. And pray uh, for the Lord to fill you daily with his Holy Spirit. There is no limit to prayer, believe me. You can pray with your eyes closed, your eyes open while you're sitting, while you're standing, amen, while you're driving, while you're kneeling, while you're lying down in bed, anywhere and any time, amen. And amen. next, I would suggest that you find a church, and if you don't have a church, amen, or if you are looking for a church, or if you want some referrals, amen, you're more than then welcome to go to our website, praise the Lord, and leave us a message there, and we will give you some local churches in your area that would be great churches for you to be plugged in. Amen? Amen. And with that, Kimmy Kim, are you there? Praise the Lord. This would be the conclusion of our broadcast. Praise the Lord. I pray that you were blessed in the name of Jesus, and I pray that the Lord will richly, amen. Are you there, uh, uh, Vandals Westbrook? Amen. I'm We're sorry. Here. No this, worries. This is Kimmy Kim and me on mute. That's okay. And I'm, Praise I, the I'm Lord. Not to, that I can hear the you have an echo. Anyway, Praise the Lord. I know. Wonderful job. I had to get her to, to, to turn down, pot down on her side. But we thank God for you for taking the time to share a word with us. And we do look forward to hearing from you again. Excellent job, the three of you. I appreciate you guys for all you've done. And I know the podcast is about to come to an end. we got just a few short minutes. But I just wanted to uh, just, uh, and I heard you talking about Abraham and you know, I'm, I was sitting there thinking about some things about Abraham. I tried to get in, uh, break in, but uh, I guess y'all was going and flowing and just left a brother for dead, actually for life, really. But I appreciate you. I want to let you know that from the depths of my heart. You know, we look forward to hearing from you, and I pray that this this definitely will not be your last time. And I know radio's a little difficult, but I think you handled it very, very, very well. There are different ones on the uh, Periscope. There are different ones on Facebook Live, and those are the only two I got up. I was late getting here. My plane was delayed because of the storms. Uh, we left. We were supposed to leave at 3.35 in the afternoon. We did not leave until 6.40, which means I didn't get here until just a few minutes ago. And by the time I got here and got set up, I just thank God that you were there. You know, God always has a ram in the bush. Always has a ram in the bush. It is truly a blessing just to um, come before God's people. And, And I want to say thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. Oh, you're going to have more than just this one. But now before you go, I really need to know what's going on with you, with your ministry. We had the privilege and pleasure of 
sharing with you last Saturday uh, at a big uh, big gathering, many different ministries out there, but just to be yes, out there sir. with Healing Mountain Ministries, my wife and I are just grateful that you invited us to come and to share with you. I mean, the different ones we've met, the ones we prayed with, and the information gathered and collected. I mean, God is going to do a work in the D.C. area. But before you go, Pastor uh, Westbrook, I want to hear from uh, Pastors Daryl and Donna, because I know they got a great work going on in California, and I need y'all to take a hot minute or a hot two minutes or three minutes or five minutes or however long it takes to share with us what God is doing out there. Because, I mean, the pastor's corner is about leadership and about letting people know what God is doing and where they can find help. So if you would do that for me, I would so greatly appreciate it, sir. Amen. Um, We are um, um, really under Healing Mountain Ministry, so we kind of like to take Uh – where she's the leadership of over us, and we kind of take lead from her. And we're just truly so excited about all the things that God is doing right now with the ministry and how it's growing. My God, and it's sometimes mm-hmm. we can't see the growth, but God is truly growing this ministry, and we just thank God for what he is doing Amen. and what he's about to do. Amen. I would like to also add, um, Elder, Ernest Richard, that on December the 15th, amen, we will be doing another outreach for the winter caps, gloves, and blankets distribution in Washington, D.C. to the homeless families, praise God. And anyone that's listening, if you are interested in joining us, it will be December the 15th from 11 to 1 o'clock, amen, at Franklin Square Park in Washington, D.C., and you can call 202-441-9202 for more information. As well as December yes. the 29th, praise the Lord, we will be having Amen. a prophetic prayer gathering, calling the wailing women in the name of Jesus. And my question for godly women in the coming year becomes, is your heart positioned faithfully enough for God to bless and radically position you to fulfill your purpose in 2019. That's going to be December the 29th from 5 to 8 at Healing Mountains Ministries International Retreat in Great Cacapon, West Virginia. Glory to God. There is no cost. If you are interested, please call 202-441-9202. God bless you. And also, I want to add, if you desire to donate blankets, they please let them be new blankets if you can. Walmart has a nice supply of blankets because blankets are a, a need. It is going to be a cold winter out there, and we really want to do what we can. Also, to my friend Fred Kinder, I don't know if you're watching Facebook or not, tents are needed as well in the area. Make sure you give me a call so I can make sure this great woman of God gets the supplies that she needs. We will be in Haiti while she's ministering in D.C., uh, Sister Richard and myself, but trust me, we plan to be with you again. Now, just to turn the page just a little bit. Mm. All right, I'm hearing a background noise, but I'm going to Sister Kimmy Kim is t- like five feet away. I'm going to have to tackle her, yo, because she keeps hitting me on. I'm messing with her. Oh anyway, the bottom line is uh, this coming uh, tomorrow, as a matter of fact, we kick off Elation's Honors Gala Weekend. We start with our meet and greet at 6 p.m., and it's going to take place at the Drury Inn. Uh, I got it on Eager Road, and Sister Kimmy Kim is going to take a hot minute to tell us about it. Where you at? Come here. Don't run away. She's running away, Pastor Dawn. You believe this? She's running away. Anyway, I'll finish it. <laughs> she just oh, ran my in Lord. the other room. Anyway, uh, it's going to take place at, uh, I think, 3870 Eager Road in uh, Brentwood, uh Missouri at the Drury Inn 
That's D-R-U-R-Y, Drury Inn. I hope I said it right. Anyway, at 7 o'clock, we're going to have a live version of The Pastor's Corner, uh, hosted by yours truly, and then on Saturday morning. Now, before we go anywhere, we need to pray uh, for uh, uh, Apostle, uh, Apostle Angela Walker. I just got news that she has to rush her husband to the hospital. And so we have to make triple sure that we lift up in prayer before we sign off. Uh, You know, the enemy's busy. Anytime you try to do something to lift the name of Jesus, you know the enemy's going to have his little imps, wimps, and his little regiment there trying to stop and block the progress. I found out that there are a few who are up in the Chicago slash Ohio area that are kind of iced in a little bit, and they may not make it, but to God be the glory. We're going to trust God for a great time anyway, but getting back from pain to purpose is the name of the Saturday format, but before that, there is a financial seminar with Brother McCutcheon. He's going to teach churches and individuals who have business how to get grants and to obtain business loans to help to induce and produce in and through their business. That will start at 10 a.m. From Pain to Purpose will start at 1 p.m. In that included is Apostle Gloria Beauty Cooper. She is going to have a segment. Uh, Dr. Loretta Petit has a segment. Uh, Minister Michelle Wright has a segment. And, of course, the keynote speaker being Apostle Angela Walker. That's all going to take place on Saturday. Then Saturday evening, we are going to be blessed with the Elation Honors Awards Gala, where we're going to honor servant leaders from around locally, regionally, nationally, and around the world. And we thank God for this opportunity, this being the first one ever. God has done such an awesome job. Thank God for uh, Evangelist Michelle Wright and all those who helped out and those who are even coming to help. And they're coming from the north, south, the east, and the west because we're starting to stockpile in St. Louis right now as we speak. I've yet to get to my hotel room yet. I had to stop and get on this broadcast because I didn't want you to think I've abandoned you, my sister. I'm never going to do that. If I can be there, I will be there. And if I can't be there, I trust the God in you to carry the torch. Nonetheless, uh, to Apostle Irvin Whitlow and his wonderful wife, we miss you guys. We know you're probably listening. He is his uh, work shift, his work pattern has shifted and he's not able to be with us, but thank God for him anyway. We bless God for everything that's going on. Now, if all hearts and minds are clear, is there anything else I need to be made aware of? Anything at all? Nothing? Okay. Well, let's take a moment to pray. Uh, Pastor Donna, uh, would you be so kind as to pray? Uh, first of all, uh, for Apostle Walker, for the recovery, the healing of her husband, and then for this ministry that's going to take place this weekend, because we're expecting God to do an awesome work. This is not about us. This is about him. We've come to glorify the Lord. And, you know, when we can work with a person as gracious as Sister Kimmy Kim, she provides programming for so many people, and she works with them according to their budget. So we just praise God for all the that she does, and, you know, include her in your prayer, if you will. So, Pastor Donna, I'm going to hush up so that you can get us prayed up, and then we'll be ready to leave. Well, she asked me to pray out. I'll pray out. No problem, sir. Yes. uh, And forgive me if I get the name of the people you asked me to pray. God knows their name. Heavenly Father, we come to you as humbly as we can and ask you, Father, anything that besets us uh, before you, any sin that we, any iniquity that besets us from you, separate us from you, Father, we ask you to wash us in your blood from top of our head to the soles of our feet. Now, Heavenly Father, you heard the request. Father, I thank you for allowing us to go ahead, Father, and speak to your people, speak a rhema word to your people. Now, Father, I'm asking you, as they go ahead, you know, that your donations for blankets, I'm asking you that the pe- that you you equip the people with finance to go ahead and get donations for blankets. I'm asking you to heal the people, Father, who are sick. You know them by their name, Father. I don't know them by name, but you know them by their name. I ask you to even touch Elder 
Elder Richard, I ask you to touch Kimmy Kim, Father. Bless them, Father, for the, the wonderful work that they're doing for you, Father. Because we everything we do is to go ahead and please you. We don't do it to please ourselves. And I thank you for doing it. Now, Father, I just ask you that you open up the windows of heaven and pour down a blessing in this ministry. Open up many windows, Father, so that you go that you will pour a blessing down that people will go ahead and receive you, Father, that they will know that you are real. And we and thank you for teaching us how to come to you, Father. Because we don't know we we need to learn, Father. We need to learn how to come to you in a humbleness, in bowing down to you, you know, to your feet, not to eye to eye, as if we as if we the same level as you, because we're not the same level as you. We're Lord in you, Father, and we thank you for teaching us at your Bible study. I ask you to touch Pastor Don, and I ask you to touch Pastor Donna for the wonderful work they did on this Bible study today. I ask you to touch them, Father, bless them, protect them, protect them where the enemy tries to go ahead, Father, and embarrass them and cause them to go ahead and feel like they didn't do that they didn't do a good job but you did but but they did a job to please you and that's all they count and i thank you father and father we be several more to give you the glory and the honor in jesus name and let everybody say amen amen now as we begin to sign off we ask that you join us tomorrow night at uh 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Uh, uh, Central Time, uh, 6 p.m. Uh, Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time as we do a live broadcast of the Pastor's Corner. As usual, Sister Kimmy Kim, get our song ready. I need you all to just remember that through the course of your work week and as you progress to get to the close, finish strong. Keep the pedal to the metal, the pep in your step. Keep that glide in your stride. Just enjoy life. Try keep the smoke in your stroke. Don't you dare let life cause you to choke yesterday's history. Tomorrow's a mystery. Keep blessing God for the gift call today. Live it to the fullest. Remind that devil he is defeated. Jesus Christ is Lord. God is still in control. You have an appointment. You have a destiny. You have a purpose. And God is encouraging you to fulfill all three in him. Until next time, for the Pastor's Corner, each one, give your recognition and sign off. I'm Elder Ernest E. Richard. Where you at, Pastor Dawn? Did she leave us? Wow. Already? Okay. I'm we sorry, I was on mute. I was talking, but I was on mute. I am here in the name of Jesus. This is Pastor Dawn Westbrook of Healing Mountains Ministries International. God bless you all. All right, Pastor Daryl. Yes, uh, this is Pastor yes, Daryl, and I'm, I'm going to just say thank you for listening to hearing the word from God, a Raymond word from the Lord. And we ask you to have a wonderful evening in the Lord. Pastor Donna. Amen. This is Pastor Donna. God bless everyone. We love you all. Amen. All right. We will catch you guys on the flip side. For those of you that are on Facebook and Periscope, stay tuned. We're going to do a quick wrap-up, and then we're going to call it a night because we've got a lot to do and a very little bit of time to do it in. All right, Sister Kimmy Kim, it's in your hands. Take us out of here. Showers of blessing We ask of you this day Then blessing and our pouring And your mercy we pray We are cups running over It's all that we ask for You can do more than this So I'm not begging
Get 